All right, and good afternoon, everybody. It's about 3 or 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm Nelson Santini, and I'll be hosting today's webinar on Polaris GWAC IDIQ, sponsored by Trident Proposal Management. Glad that you could join us today. We're going to be actually just doing a quick status update on what's going on with Polaris. Uh, also, we're going to touch base on what to do while we're in this particular short pause period. Make sure that we make the best use of our time. Uh, on the agenda, some key takeaways on this short the webinar for today. Hopefully, uh, we'll be uh, covering the topics so you can get back to business. But um, some key takeaways related to the feedback. We just uh, The deadline just happened on the 23rd of the month. Uh, recommendations on doing a bid no bid to evaluate the impact on other solicitations as Polaris is being delayed. Reviewing your qualifications and compliance matrices. And also making sure that you have your house uh, in order as it refers to MP and JVs if you are engaged in one of those. So those are the key takeaways. We're just going to actually just have the presentation posted on our website afterwards with a short video in case you want to share this uh, uh, webinar with your friends. A quick review. The sponsored uh, today is actually Trident Proposal Management established in 2008. It's a uh, small Business, veteran-owned, out of California and San Diego, specializes in some key disciplines in proposal management, capture management, and anything related to solicitations and proposal management for the federal government. Your speaker today, it's me. About 25 years of experience uh, in federal uh, procurement, mostly in satellite communications with the U.S. Army and the Marine Corps, about $2 billion in sales, uh, in direct sales, and ceilings and IDIQs. Um, an avid uh, sales operations blogger, and my email is nelson at tridentproposals.com. If you have any questions, you want to hit me up via email or on the chat box. I'll be make sure to cover those in the presentation today, which should be a good dialogue. So being that it is a short presentation, if you have any questions, please make sure that you ask them and I'll try to cover them throughout the presentation. <clears throat> the agenda for today, going to go through the uh, current timeline of events for Polaris. Really briefly, the, the last changes uh, as a result of the comments uh, and the um Feedback that was given back to the uh, GSA. We're going to go through the recommendations on the bid, no bid, the qualifications, uh, and reviewing the compliance matrix. Uh, Mentor Protege Joint Venture uh, Program Administrative uh, re Recommendations and having Q&A. So with that said, let's just get right into it. The current deadline uh, for Polaris was actually just moved uh, from May onto the month of June. And if you look at all of the solicitations in SAM and everywhere else, uh, it's currently stated uh, as the 30th of June of 2022. But in the fine print, you can see that the government is saying that they're going to allocate for additional time uh, for the solicitations to be turned in for the small business and for the woman-owned uh, small business submitters uh, because of the delay that has happened as a result of the protest. So we expect that the current deadline of the 30th of June, that's going to be pushed back probably you know somewhere into the middle of July. So if you're looking at the 30th of June right now, and we know that after that, it's going to happen the 4th of July, you can expect probably that the solicitation deadline is going to be sometime in the latter part of the month of July. doesn't mean that you need to slack. It just means that you're going to have more time to basically complete the work that you have. That means that the awards by consequence are likely going to be moved back. They were currently slated for uh, the month of November of 2023. We expect that those awards may actually just move back probably staying within the calendar year or the first quarter of the fiscal year for the government. And with respect to the small uh, businesses that qualify under the hub zone or the veteran-owned small businesses, we expect that those may move back as well. They're currently slated for Q4 fiscal year 2022, uh, which is actually just you know upon us. So we think that those will move into Q1 fiscal year 2023, October, November, and December. So everything moving to the right, not a sur uh, surprise because we know that uh, this these things uh, do happen, but uh, that is the current plan uh, as in deadlines. When it comes down to the modifications in previous webinars, uh, we actually had covered most of the of the changes. This is not all the changes since the original solicitation. If you have any particular questions on those changes, please feel free to direct them uh, to me via email. We also have the information posted on the website. But uh, in the fine print, you know uh, that uh, we've observed in the comments from GSA. And also in the other websites, we've gleaned just two little nuggets that I just wanted to highlight. Number one uh, is the one on the mentor protege and joint venture that at least one of the qualifying projects must be from the small business interest. So not that it's actually a shocker, but you know, in in, in clear, 
one of the qualifying projects must be from the small business interest in that mentor protege joint venture uh, team. And the other piece uh, that was asked again back into the fine print is, you know, the second bullet where we are talking or the GSA is talking about making sure that the contribution is clear and the attribution is clear as far as who's a contributing party to the qualifying project experience. I say that with a light double tap on the floor, dump, dump, because it is really important that when you're preparing your documentation, it is painfully clear to the evaluation team, very easily clear to them uh, on who's basically bringing what contribution. So those are the two nuggets that we have on the changes as we're looking through the fine print. We've covered all of those, uh, all of the other ones in the previous webinars. If you have any questions uh, as far as changes that you may see in the solicitation, please uh, highlight them and we'll make sure we cover them on the next webinar. Also, would like to tell you that the questions uh, period was ended the 23rd of this month, so a couple of days ago. We expect that no notations from the government will be posted soon. As soon as those happen, we will actually a send a notification to the team who subscribe here to the webinars and may also uh, elect to have a webinar if the comments are substantial. So please stand by for those, but expect that some additional modifications will come as a result of the answers to the questions posted on the 23rd of May. As far as actually on the changes that are standing by, that was actually the, the information that I just covered. We're expecting uh, comments coming back from the GSA on the feedback that was provided by the 23rd. We again expect the deadline you know, to be moved back into the month of July as we just covered. And then we're expecting delays into the other blocks. So we, I covered the information, I guess I was ahead of my own self, but um, we expect that the deadline is gonna move to the right uh, as I just discussed in the previous slide. So what are the recommendations? What should we be doing right now when the government is telling us, please just hold off on your proposal activities? Well, there's a couple of things that we should be doing. And as we continue to move back and wait you know, for the deadline to happen, one of the best things to do is to conduct a few bid, no bids, not only for Polaris, just to make sure that you still can actually have the folks available and of course that it is of interest, but also running a bid, no bid on other solicitations that may be impacted by the delay in Polaris. We don't expect that there be a lot of changes, but it's always good discipline and muscle memory to make sure that when a delay happens on a major solicitation, you do an assessment of your team, make sure that you still have the resources to actually just complete the proposal should some major changes happen when the final solicitation is led. Um, as far as actually you know, on the uh, other elements that I'm showing on the slide, one of the key elements is just to make sure that there are no risk costs because you're in a mentor protege joint venture relationship. And so what that means is please make sure that, you know, you're staying current with your mentor protege JV partner to make sure that there are no material changes as far as an acquisition, uh, a merger activity, or perhaps some other bad C parts that may have come in uh, during the time uh, or between the time when you guys engage and where we are, because those things do happen every now and then. So it's very important for you to understand where you stand and make sure that you're still with the best partner to go in an MPJV relationship. Second recommendation, some motherhood and apple pie, but very important that you look at your qualification matrix. Again, as we continue to slide, uh, you ha may have some qualifying projects that may fall out of the, the window, or uh, because some may have fallen out of the qualifying window, you may have to jockey around the qualifying projects that you would use. So please, I ask you to make sure that you're looking at your qualifying projects, make sure that they're within the window, Make sure that they are actually uh, still worthy of the points or, you know, you think that you're going to get the most points on your qualifying standards as, you know, in the scoring matrix. And again, make sure that you're looking at and having a contingency plan. As we continue to slide the deadline to the right, some proposals may fall outside of the window. And again, I just want to make sure that uh, you folks who are actually putting your proposals together, don't put yourself into a position where uh, an administrative ninja move may actually disqualify your company. Last comment on recommendations um, on the mentor protege and JV. Again, when the, within the fine print of the latest changes after the protest, a couple of things. Make sure that you have your mentor protege JV uh, documentation all properly filed. So that means that you need to have everything buttoned up, everything legally uh, established in accordance with the laws of your state to make sure that you know it's a um, valid MPJV. Number two, make sure that you complete your SAM registration and have your cage number for the mentor protege JV relationship. So make sure you complete all of that administration. And last piece, as I discussed, discussed before, is to make sure you have your QPs identified and that you also have the right attributions. And again, 
if you're going to be, if you're the, the small business and a mentor protege, it's likely or it's possible that you may have uh, a mentor protege um, prime or a larger company that may be a sponsoring other company. If that is the case, as rare as that may be, please make sure that you know, you're not using qualifying projects in more than one solicitation. So again, we urge you to make sure that you're paying attention to your relationship, talk with your mentor protege, and make sure that that actually uh, is all ironed out. I have a question on the chat here coming from Maronia uh, Moultrie. And the question is, do you think that the SDBOSV set-aside will look similar, especially with a mentor protege joint venture QP requirement? Great question, and the answer is yes. As a matter of fact, you know, the question I don't think is only applicable to the SDBOSB, but also to the hub zone and also to other solicitations. And so um, what we saw happen uh, in the protests in Polaris, we think it's going to have ramifications that are going to be moving forward into the services Mac or the Oasis follow on. And so, yes, we do expect that the precedent that has been set here is going to cascade onto the SDBOSB hub zone and other solicitations out there. So double tap on the floor. We think that this is a trend that was um, approved and is likely to remain actually active for this and other solicitations. So a very good question. Okay. Um, that basically brings me over to the Q&A session and I just addressed the first one. So I guess, again, ahead of my time here, like Panasonic anticipating the future, any questions from the team or any questions from those attending? Today was actually a very short webinar uh, just sharing the limited information that has changed since the last one, being respectful of your time, but want to make sure that this is also part of a Q&A session. So any questions from the team related to this solicitation, any questions for those who are actually uh, going to be partaking onto the SDBOSB and Hub Zone, please let me know here online, or if you want to hit me up uh, via email at nelson at tridentproposals.com, glad to answer some questions and help you with that. And I will be remiss if I don't also offer that. One of the th good things that you could do is look for a third party that can actually just look at your information uh, for your mentor protege JV or also all of your scoring matrix to make sure that you're in the best position. And so if you're so inclined, would we'll like for uh, somebody to do that service for you, Pride and Proposal Management is offering those services and we can actually just help you with that, being that third party to review your information. I do have a question here from Sohail. You know, good to see you again. Thanks a lot for being a faithful attendant here to the webinars. Is GSA likely to publish answers to questions posted? Absolutely. They're required to do that and post the questions. And so we do expect that next week we will see a consolidated version of the answers to the questions posted. But absolutely, we do. And as soon as we have that information, A, we'll put a bulletin out to the attendees, and B, we may even have a compendium or a summarized version to make sure that uh, you can quickly look at the categories, what has changed, and if so interested, you can dig into the documentation. But absolutely. They're required to post those answers, and, and we expect to review them next week. Yes, great question. Okay. Looking into the board to see if any other question pops up. I'm looking at the uh, at the board, see if anybody's actually just uh, posting a question. But again, uh, glad to answer any particular questions. We will continue to actually to blog actively on Polaris, post any updates, and send those out in the um, on a bulletin or um, newsletter, if you will. So be in, on the lookout for those. And just for reference, so the like, it's very likely that we will have the next webinar towards the end of the month of June, based on the delays that we're seeing and the changes. So stay tuned. We'll be continuing to communicate with you via email and let you know when the date of the next webinar is based on when the government actually responds to the questions uh, that, that we were just discussing, the feedback as of the, uh, on the questions submitted on the 23rd. Okay. I don't see any additional questions. Oh, one from Bill Davis. Okay. Do you think there will be any more changes on the risk organization requirement? Um, we don't think that there may be, that there are going to be more changes in the risk section and the risk organization requirement. So it's not to say that they can change it, but I think that the government actually just went through a lot of a pain right before they actually just made the, the, the let on the 13th of March to actually just change that section. So we don't expect that there will be some massive changes there short of actually something being highlighted on the questions submitted on the 23rd of May. So for the answer for now is no, we don't expect more changes. We haven't seen any indication. I've been to a couple of actually uh, conferences from GSA on this particular topic and have not seen anything. But if we do find something based on the question, we'll make sure to make an announcement uh, again on the bulletin. But the answer for now is no. Thanks for the question, Bill. Good question. 
Okay, looking to see if there are any other questions that we have from the team. I don't see anybody typing. So that's all that I have in the presentation for today. If you want to hang around for a couple of minutes, please feel free to do so. When you exit, you'll be taken into our website, entrainerproposals.com, where you can have access to some of the information. And as I mentioned, the presentation uh, will be posted later this afternoon, so you can have it for your reference. Also, with a link to the webinar, as, more, as short as it was, it'll be available for you to watch it one more time and review the answers that I've given today. So with that, thank you so much for attending. My name is Nelson Santini from Trident Proposal Management, signing off. Have a great rest of the day, and I hope that you have a fantastic Memorial Day with your family and friends. Please take a moment to remember those veterans that make the ultimate sacrifice you know, for us. We remember them as well. Thanks so much for your attendance and talk soon.